Welcome to Love for the Truth Radio, a program devoted to encouraging you to be a contender of the faith in an ever-changing church culture. On Love for the Truth Radio, we will discuss current issues and challenging views along with biblical truth that can affect our Christian worldview and how we live out our faith. And now, here's your host, Cindy Hartline. Welcome to another Love for the Truth program. You know, today we will be talking about spiritual warfare. I hear Christians talking about it all the time, but some of you are unfamiliar with the term. So we will be discussing what spiritual warfare is, why it happens, and how a believer in Christ can get unknowingly entangled with it. Our guest today is Dr. Gregory Reed, author of 13 books, including Trojan Church, A Cry in the Wilderness, The Color of Pain, and the one we will be referring to today, War of the Ages, which is a complete scriptural guide to confronting and defeating Satan's kingdom. It's a rough topic and one that is not often taught, but if you like listening to Love or the Truth and hearing programs like this, please don't forget to hit our subscribe button, and the bell so you can be notified when another program is posted. Now, you know this is the first time I've ever said that, but I can't tell you how many people, subscribers, out of 4,000 and so sub- subscribers, are asking us, when is this program going to air? Uh, Dr. Gregory Reed has been in youth ministry since 1975. As a graduate of Christ for the Nation's Bible School in Dallas, he holds an honorary degree from Logos Graduate School and is an ordained minister with American Evangelistic Association. Dr. Reed is the director of Youth Fire Ministry and served as a youth pastor at Cross Point Church in El Paso, Texas for seven years, and he is committed to speaking truth to this generation and served as a private investigator for 20 years as a contract criminal justice trainer on occult crimes and crimes against children and speaks extensively on spiritual warfare and other crucial issues for our times. Welcome, Dr. Gregory Reed. It's a pleasure to have you on Love for the Truth Radio once again. Thank you. It's my honor to be with you. It's such an honor to have you. You know, I think about those 20 years as a contract criminal justice trainer on occult crimes. It just blows my mind. And uh, how the Lord has walked you through, you know, practically, uh, what we're walking through spiritually. Um, especially the crimes that are against children. It's like the crimes that are against God's people, and that's what we're dealing with today. Um, You know, in your book, War of the Ages, which I love, I've been reading it all week, I think I devoured the whole thing, Uh, you mentioned how the progression of sin causes cultural and personal regression and believe that no culture can survive the regressive nature of sin and destruction unless they have a foundation of truth. And you and I both agree in one truth, and that is Jesus Christ and his gospel of truth. Uh, Can you brief our listeners on your thoughts in reference to the American culture and the regression we are witnessing of morality, righteousness, and justice? Yes, well, I think that, you know, the whole picture was painted very clearly by Paul in Romans chapter 1 about men uh, coming to a place where they would no longer retain the knowledge of God, but uh, they turned towards idolatry, and that created something else. And you could see people should read it for themselves and look at that as a template for the age we're living in, because you can see very clearly how when when all these things are are in our culture, and, and let's look a little bit at, at just in our culture, because we've never been uh, it, it, all countries to God need the Savior, and he loves them, but he's had, I think, a special purpose for the United States in some ways, and we have carried the gospel of the world in extraordinary ways. But I think part of that was contingent on whether, particularly, the Church was going to walk in truth, and whether we were going to set a standard for the whole culture. Mm. And what began to happen in the 50s with the just uh, little things, we weren't a perfect land by any stretch of the imagination, but we are far away from being even a semblance of a Christian nation now, unfortunately. Um, although there are many Christians in the land, we can look clearly and look back and say, okay, in the 50s, 
there was a loosening of the laws of God, the Ten Commandments, because that's really the template by which we're judged Mm -hmm. initially when we come to the cross. We have to say, I can't do this, Uh, but it still stands as the culturally, those simple Ten Commandments are the best way to keep a a culture intact, Mm -hmm. a nation intact, you know, with Christ or without Christ, the, it, the law stands. The Ten Commandments, I'm talking about the rest of the law, but the Ten Commandments specifically are these unchangeable moral truths. And one by one, the enemy started attacking them, and he starts always with the home. So mm-hmm. he started to, to, to whittle away at, at the marriage uh, covenant. And uh, adultery started to become more of an issue, even, uh, you know, in the church. And then it got into the culture where you had Madeline Murray O'Hare coming in mm-hmm. and they banned mm-hmm. prayer in the school. And as a result of that, the wall came down a little further. And after that, we had um, abortion being legalized. And after that, we had, you know, in the 60s, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And we let a door open to the Eastern culture, mysticism, and yes. occult- and uh, occultism and uh, worshiping of, of false gods and idols. That took over the youth culture, along with drug use, which is forbidden by God. Mm-hmm. And uh, the music became something that was pretty abominable in some ways. And uh, it just loosened the walls. And every decade or so, these changes are taking place, which has gotten us to where we are now. Then it was a breaking down of uh, all the marriage uh, vows, and then it was you know, the LGBT thing came in, and it's now it's marriage, a marriage, LGBTQ, mm. and now we're at the next stage, and I believe this is the last stage, and people need to hear me here, mm-hmm. and youth pastors need to be trained and understand this very clearly. This thing I've been rallying, railing about for years is the pedophile community yes. has been very organized since mm. the 60s, mm. and their goal is to lower the age of consent to be able to have sex with children of mm-hmm. any age. Karma. And they never gave that up, but with the LGBTQ success of that template, which was actually built on another template, they're using that now, and now you're hearing it all over the place. It's starting out slowly, which you can hear more and more. They've renamed themselves MAPS, which stands for Minor Attracted Persons. Mm-hmm. And they've got a group of psychologists and apostate religious people who are trying to normalize pedophilia, but it's the youth that are starting to grasp it and to push for it, and that is truly frightening. Oh my goodness, that's something I didn't know about, honestly. Uh, You know, if you, uh, we're talking about breaking down the walls and erasing the boundaries and how walls represent defense against invasion and how that picture is applicable in spiritual warfare. And this is why, now we're wondering, this is why we're battling continuously to get back to the righteousness that some of us have grow, grown up in. Not perfect, but we've grown up in a different culture, a different world. We want to get back to that. And yet, I think we've gone too far. And to hear, uh, Dr. Greg, about the youth pastors and about this group MAPS, never heard of that before, and how the children are falling prey to it as well. You know, um, why don't we—I use the word spiritual warfare, but why don't we explain uh, what spiritual warfare is and the breaking down of the walls and how it relates to demonic invasion in our souls? You know what? We're going on a break, and that came really quick. We're going to have to take this on the other side of the break, so please stay tuned. With us is Dr. Gregory Reed. You don't want to miss this show. Please hang in there. Hold on, and we'll be right back. Many would agree that we are living in unprecedented times. Grave immorality is on the rise, as in the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. There are wars and rumors of wars as nations rise against nations. Prophecy is being fulfilled as the birth pangs become quicker and harder. These are the signs of the return of Jesus Christ. There is one sign often left untaught. Jesus also told the disciples in the Olivet Discourse to take heed that no man deceive you. 
This warning applies to us too. Deception has infiltrated the churches through many false teachings and movements, making apostasy paramount. As contenders of the faith, we do our best to research and discuss these false teachings for you, the listener. Thank you for having a love for the truth. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Hartline, Love for the Truth Radio. Uh, with us is Dr. Gregory Reed. You want to check out Amazon for his 13 books. I think 13 of them are up right now, and he's working on his 14th one, so you don't want to miss what Gregory has to say. Uh, wealth of information. I went through his book, War of the Ages, devoured it this week, couldn't get enough of it, and uh, you may want to check that book out as well. Uh Greg, do you want to go back to what you were talking about, about the youth pastors and the children? Uh, yes, I think it's really important because the modern uh, template for youth pastoring in most churches, unfortunately, is mm -hmm. uh, you just do some games, you give them something, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some fun stuff, show a video or two, maybe you have an Xbox type of youth ministry. You give them a little worship, a little Jesus snack, and then you send them out the door. Mm -hmm. They're not going to survive that because this youth culture has walled itself off in such a significant way that it's going to take God's power and mercy to break through and reach them uh, because we're not relevant to them. Uh, and truth does not have to be. Truth is relevant no matter what. So here's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of youth pastors coming out of seminary, and they're young, and they're salary-based, and they don't have a lot of spiritual training in any of these things. Yeah. And if they're younger, and what do they do when they, they're maybe in a junior high school ministry and they have a young lady that's underage that comes on to them? Mm. They're not prepared for that. No, I agree. And they need to be, and the churches and the pastors need to wake up and don't put people in place that are going to be vulnerable in that respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, But the whole template of spiritual warfare, I, I, it, I think Washman E. called it the normal Christian life because— it's simple. It's based on two things. Ephesians 6, 11, mm -hmm. have nothing to do with the, the uh, unfruitful works of darkness, but yeah. rather expose them. Yes. And Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, put on the whole armor of God. It's an armor of defense and offense. And we defend ourselves from the attacks, and we go on the offense to protect our family, our friends, our culture, and to bring people to Jesus Christ. Most Christians would agree that there is spiritual wickedness in our culture and government. Uh, I don't know about you listeners, but I feel the wrestling and the spiritual warfare uh, every single day. We're in the battle for, of temptation, the oppression, all kinds of things. You know, but there are listeners out there, however, I know who may be hearing about spiritual warfare for the first time. So I want to focus on what that is and how and when we are subject to it. Uh, Gray, if you want to just explain what that is really quick, give, paint a picture, and then we can go on to what you mentioned in your book about how certain sins will open portals uh, to spiritual yes. warfare. Well, as believers, um, <clears throat> we, we are, obviously, we're commanded to put on the armor, mm -hmm. and it's not plastic armor. It's there because the war is real, and the war, mm -hmm. if you're a believer— is to take you out of the war. That's what the enemy wants. Mm. He wants you to be ineffective mm. in the kingdom of God. And we have to make a choice at some point, and the choice is one of two things. We can ignore that war, circle the wagons, and wait until the enemy overwhelms us, or we can understand the basic principles of guarding ourselves spiritually, closing all the doors that we have to to the enemy in our own personal lives, and put that armor on and face this battle, whether it's pleasant or not. It's not. Spiritual warfare is not pleasant. But we are promised the overwhelming victory in Christ if we do things according to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love that, if we do things according to the Word of God. But a lot of time when, when, uh, times when deception comes in, people don't know how to discern uh, because they think they're under grace. You know, you mentioned in your book how certain sins open portals of the soul for demonic influences, strongholds, and possessions to enter. Uh, share with us what some of those specific sins are. I think you mentioned it on page 261, and then you could define what a stronghold is, because I think that's what's going on, too. Yes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, any number of sins can open up doors to demonic influence. People get scared because they think, what are you talking about, possession? 
The word possession is not in the Bible. The word is demonized, mm-hmm. which means you can have a degree of influence from from the enemy or from demonic things. Mm. But things that could open those doors are things like drug addiction, uh, pornography, sex addiction, um, you know, any of the sexual sins that God forbids. Uh, it can be occultism and uh, Particularly those three, in, if, what I mean by a stronghold is when the Bible says that a threefold cord is not easily broken. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when we pray for people, we find when there's a huge bondage or what I call a stronghold, because Jesus talked about a stronghold uh, that had to, you had to plunder that thing in the house in order to get a person cleaned out. Mm-hmm. It's whatever takes the place of Jesus on the throne. And uh, often occultism, uh, sex uh, problems within the family lineage, and uh, drug and alcohol problems. are all, That's the threefold cord that I've seen a lot in people's lives. And they have to be unraveled mm-hmm. and dealt with one at a time uh, according to the Word of God and, and a lot of prayer. So you can be free so that the enemy doesn't have any power over you. Yeah, I think one of the things, Greg, and I know you'd be, you would agree with me, is that we are taught the gospel of grace so much that we are the righteousness of Christ, and we're walking by grace, and God sees us, He doesn't see our sins, and so even if we do sin and we fall short, it's okay because He forgives us. You know, I think that's a dangerous way to think, and I know you would agree, that we have to recognize the sins that are the enemies of our soul, That are, that's letting in those influences, and you said demonized, I just, I'm sorry I said possession before, but uh, those strongholds, meaning that you get to a point where you become addicted, you can't stop, it's really difficult, you need Christ to break that stronghold to uh, to help out, you know, help you overcome it. Um, you know, you talked about generational sins, and, you know, as I was reading your book, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you know, like there's been a lot of stuff in my lineage And I actually thought, how on earth did I overcome the generational sins? You know, and I thank God that I am where I am uh, because uh, you said that it affects the the generation, I think, to the second and third generation, right? Yes. Mm. And that becomes a point where we have to face that and look Mm -hmm. back in our family lineage. Like I had so many things. Mm -hmm. I had everything from, from Masons to... Yes. to witches, to occultism, to Mormons. I had it all back there, and then yes. drug and alcohol, you had it all. And so as they came up, and, and I realized there was a stronghold, I had to take before God and say, God, sever this by the blood of Jesus mm-hmm. Christ and the power of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and deny it its right. It has no right, no mm-hmm. heritage, or no inheritance anymore, mm-hmm. and I refuse to pass this on to, to further generations. And God would, would break it. It's really simple. It's not mm-hmm. a hard process. It's recognizing it and then disconnecting from it. Yeah, amen. Well, we're going on a break, and with us is Dr. Gregory Reed. You don't want to miss the end of the show. Please stay tuned. We're going to tell you how you can clean your soul, clean your house, you know, if you've been involved in anything that was mentioned here today. So please stay tuned. If you're a first-time listener, you'll find that on Love for the Truth Radio, we discuss news and views from a biblical worldview. We believe that the Bible is the inerrant Word of God and the absolute truth that should be applied to every aspect of life. We don't proclaim to have a cap on the truth, but we do have a love for biblical truth. So please, take everything you hear on this radio program to study and prayer. And thank you for listening to Love for the Truth Radio. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Hartline. Our guest today is Dr. Gregory Reed. He's the author of 13 books. And today we've been touching a little bit, just a little bit, on or War of the Ages. I'll tell you what, the book is just filled with so much information. You need to get a hold of it. You may, may want to check it out on Amazon. Uh, you know, Greg, there's a lot of people that are dealing, that may not think that it's a big deal, but 
you know, dealing with unforgiveness, self-pity, rage, bitterness, gossip, crit- having a critical spirit. And these, this is really, uh, these are portholes, I believe, to allow the enemy to come in. And, and I, I know you would agree because it's in your book. That's where I got it from. Uh, you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Sure, yeah. And, and one of the ways that I became aware of myself is when I came to the Lord, I was, you know, 15 kinds of awful, you know, trying to get repaired. And, you know, Jesus just took me one step at a time, but he had to get some of the big things out of the way, you know, some of the addictions, some of those things. Mm-hmm. And I got through that, and it's like, oh, well, thank you, Jesus. Now I'm ready for anything. And the Lord was like, son, I'm just getting started with you. And he started to pull back the, the veil on the things that were in my heart. It's mm-hmm. like, the bitterness, the unforgiveness, the ungratefulness, the the the, the mm-hmm. rage, the uh, self pity, all the things that you mentioned, and I had to go for God and say, Lord, get to the root of all these things. Teach me by your word how to be a new person in Christ mm-hmm. and believe what you said about me and to walk in those things. Uh, but part of that too, for a believer, we have to at some point go through. Uh, a physical house cleaning of uh, the things that we may be holding on to, like music we know we shouldn't have, movies we know we shouldn't have, mm. um, get unaddicted from pornography, uh, even occultic things that a person may be hanging on to and um, may not know. And that's why the book, I think, is important, because I list some of those things. Uh, Astrology is a no-go, you know, of uh, 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 Yoga is a no-go. It's an occult tool. I'm sorry. It helps people stretch. You can stretch without doing it that way. Um, mm-hmm. This new thing called the Enneagram, which is another subject we'll cover later, but we need to make sure that our doors are closed to anything of an occult nature or an addictive nature. Basically, whatever makes Jesus uncomfortable, we need to get rid of. Amen. Um, Greg, why don't we talk about how do we clean house? In other words, how do we stand before God, clean ourselves up, and uh, so we can not be ashamed uh, should he return? I think that's so important because we have to start with, <laughs> there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, Romans <laughs> 8.1. Mm-hmm. We have to go in knowing that our sins have already been paid for on the cross. But God wants us to go further. It's called sanctification. And so we have to go before God and say, Bible in hand, a notebook in hand, and say, Lord, what the Psalms say, create in me a clean heart, O God, Mm -hmm. and renew a right spirit within me. Take anything, Lord, out of my life and show me anything that I need to get rid of or that's offensive to you or that's hurting me or hurting my family and show me how to take it to the cross and lay it down, lay it on the altar, and not look back. And will we go back to them from time to time? Hopefully not, but usually we do. Uh, And then you do the same thing. Lord, I'm sorry. I slipped. Forgive me. Strengthen me. Make me more like Jesus. So we walk in the fear of the Lord, which says, I do not need to have this in my life, and I need to get rid of it. And all the also the grace of God that gives us grace is the power to overcome these things. Mm-hmm. Amen. And Jesus is the grace. He was the mediator that His yes. blood covers our sins, and He He uh, intercedes for us even now in the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And we we thank God that we have Him as the High Priest uh, that helps us overcome as well what we're dealing with. You know, it's not only the outside things, the occult occultism, you know, whether it's yoga or the practices or books or things that we're, we get involved with, we need to burn them up, lay them down, you know, surrender our lives to him. But also it's, uh, the like Greg had mentioned, the self-pity, the rage, the bitterness, the gossip, a critical spirit, and anything that makes our heart hardened. You know, we need to have a clean heart, a right spirit before the Lord so that he can a minister to us through the Spirit of Truth, through the agent of the Holy Spirit, according to His Word, so that we can be made right, clean, like a bride that is dressed and ready for when He returns. Uh, do you have anything else you want to share in a way of encouragement? I, I mean, this is the spiritual warfare that we're in, Greg. I mean, we're, we're, we're constantly battling our own ways and then ways of the world. You know the cultural things yes. that are coming up. So we're we're in a battle continuously, and I know you had mentioned that before. 
Yes, and we're in a battle uh, for our our culture and for our country, but we're also in a battle for our kids and the future mm-hmm. for however long we're here before Jesus comes back. And I just want to urge anybody that's involved in church work, youth work, any of that, we need to make a priority of crying out for this next generation because if if God does not raise up the next generation in this country, uh, the, the church is going to be closing its doors in 20, 30 years because there'll be no one to take the gospel forward mm-hmm. uh, because we all are at a point now where we're in our, I know for myself in my later years, I probably won't be around 40 years from now. I want to make sure I pour it into the next generation. Find someone that you can pour your life into for Jesus Christ, raise them up, make them strong, teach them how to fight. And when you do that, then you'll be you'll have them armored up to face what's coming. How this battle plays out before Jesus comes back, I have to say the only thing we know is work while it is yet day because the night's coming when no man can work. So we need to get busy, get on the front lines, and uh, steady on till dawn because Jesus is coming back. Yeah, and I think it makes a difference when we know that we're always going to be in a warfare. We need to find our rest and that peace that surpasses all understanding while we're in the warfare or on the battle lines, the front lines. I mean, that's where we're going to find it, knowing that the battle's already won, but we have to heed the Lord's instructions, know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and uh, surrender our will and our ways to Him. And, uh, you know, that's what I— I, I know that we've got to do that to even survive this culture and survive all the influences that are coming against our very souls, the enemy of our soul, uh, especially what's going on with the kids today. It's unbelievable. You know, um, I don't know if you want to talk about that real quickly, uh, that we need to just pray. Like you talked about the next generation, but I'll tell you what, our kids are being caught up. There's just so much coming against them. Yeah, they're they're overwhelmed by, by mm-hmm. everything, by and and the the devil there's a book that Winky Prattney did years ago called Devil Take the Youngest, mm. and he explained the and and I, this is the encouragement because he said before God moved in a powerful way he always tried to take out the youth he always tried to take out Moses first and then Jesus but you know to take them out and and for every generation is going to have that war so as we fight for this generation. We need to stop playing games. Youth pastors and churches need to stop playing games with their youth and get them ready to do battle. And I've heard parents along the way say, well, they can't handle much. They have no idea what the kids are facing if they say that. The kids are already in battles that we can't even understand. And if we don't shore up mm-hmm. the relationships mm-hmm. and be heart-to-heart with these kids and get them ready and strong, then we pretty much already lost them. And I refuse for the church of Jesus Christ to to be defeated in that way. As long as God gives me breath, I'm going to be preaching and saying, invest in the next generation while we still have time. Amen. That's a good cause to clean ourselves up. You know, if we can't do it for ourselves, do it for your kids, do it for your grandkids, the next generation. We need to be good examples, Christ-like examples. We need to fight the good fight of faith for our kids. Uh, They're the ones that the enemy's coming hard against. You know, between the babies, the children, and and, and you knowing what's being said in schools now. You know, of course, uh, the plan is to get the kids uh, out from under their parents' um, government or governing powers. In other words, uh, just take the kids, teach them what they want to teach them, and do what they want to do with them. We've got to fight against that really hard. Um, do you have any encouragement, Dr. Reed, for us? Yeah, just, you know, the scriptures say the overwhelming victory is ours in Christ, uh, and and we need to not just be proactive in the warfare, but we also need to realize that this is all going somewhere, and we have we are promised that all the resources of heaven are on our side when Amen. we're doing Jesus' work to reach people for Christ, and uh, we should be the most joyous people in the world, even in the midst of the battle, partly because we know that Jesus is all he's 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 waiting for us and he's kind of returned for us, but also just knowing that as believers, uh, the devil may throw what he wants at us, but we are his, we belong to Jesus, amen. And the enemy cannot take that away. And so, be encouraged because even the weakest Christian or the smallest child can say the name of Jesus and 
send 10,000 demons to flight. I really believe that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen to that. Can we have a final prayer? Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everybody that's listening to this, God, and help them to be encouraged, Lord, in an hour where so many are discouraged, Lord, and there's so many that are thinking, God can't do anything with me. I've had too many sins in my life. It's too late. I'm too old. I'm too sick. Any of that, Lord, you will armor up everybody that can hear that. Prayer is the most powerful thing in the world any of us can do, and we can all do that, Lord. But pray for my friends that might be listening, God. Encourage them, comfort them, strengthen them. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, listeners, for listening again to Love for the Truth Radio. Please stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell. You know I never say that, but I'm saying it now because we're getting a lot of great uh, information and programs coming up, so please stay with us. God bless listeners. God bless everyone. And until next time, big hugs. Big hugs.